Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is B. Avery here for my spoiler field review for Captain Marvel. Yes, I did say spoilers. You did hear me correctly. So if you haven't seen Captain Marvel yet, and I'm probably sure you have by now, came out a couple of days ago. I'm filming this on a Saturday night. I strongly suggest you turn the video off now. Go watch the movie or go back, watch my non-spoiler review. Then you can come back and watch this so you won't be spoiled. Or if you just don't care about being spoiled, I mean, you can stay tuned, subscribe, make sure you do that, and you can get spoiled away. So I'm going to be talking about this movie up, down, left, right, in, and out as if you've already seen the movie. So you have been warned. And the way I'm going to do this, hopefully this won't be as long as my last non-spoiler review for Captain Marvel. Uh, I jotted down a few things right here that I want to talk about. I am not going to be going beat for beat in the entire movie uh, of what happened. I, I, I did that in my spoiler review for Black Panther last year, but I'm not going to be doing that. And to be honest with you, I'm going to be talking about majority of the things that bother me in the film because of my non-spoiler review. I did enjoy the film uh, a lot. Uh, I gave it an 8 out of 10 um and to be honest with you i was w watching a, a ton of other critics and youtubers and people giving their opinion on youtube and it's kind of split down the middle a lot of people love the movie some people thought it was okay a lot of people said it sucked i don't understand why but everyone is entitled to their own opinion hence is the name of my channel so uh i mean that's cool in the game all that good stuff so i'm just gonna you know get in and start talking about some of the stuff that you know i want to talk about now f first thing that i really did love about this film is the very beginning where we got the tribute to stan lee i thought that was dope usually when we have the opening credits to these mcu marvel cinematic universe films it's usually all the avengers and some type of epic pose and you know that they're, they're fading in and out of the camera and they're doing all this and that but you know they changed all that and had stan lee in it of course because we were not have none of this if it wasn't for a stand the man stanley rest in peace my brother you will be missed so i like that that was a beautiful touch to start the movie and also what i really loved at the very beginning i, th I mentioned this in my non-spoiler review as well is the Cree, their whole world and all of their team up like the way they was fighting and stuff like that so when they infiltrated that Cree um planet like out, i think it was called like a outsource planet or or outland planet or something like that outbase planet i can't remember they were trying to go in and rescue another Cree soldier but they realized that this soldier was captured they used that mind control device that they use well not mind control mind reading device that they use on captain marvel carol danvers verse uh, a few scenes later and they was able to decipher the code or whatever and so it was a trap basically you know i am talking spoilers and all these refugees down here on this planet on the surface they thought were just you know just, just people that did not know what the hell that, that was going on but all of them were secret scrolls and the Kree were outnumbered but you know they put up that big giant shield and it's not like they just knew i mean it's not like someone had to give commands to do that they just kind of knew you know what to do and i just kind of like that unity between the Kree or whatever you know i I, th I thought that was pretty dope um I, I liked that the choreography was great it wasn't as great in the last third act scene on the spaceship with the horrible music choice uh, which I mentioned before, but you know, that is something that I like early on. I'm like, man, you know, I'm really loving this film so far. Um, also, kind of now, we, we, yeah, we, I'm skipping around a little bit, I'm not gonna go in the order of the movie. Um, I was kind of ticked off that they made the scrolls out to be the good guys or whatever. Um, I like the way that they were heading in the film as far as that's concerned, but I would have liked it as soon as Talos. Uh, played by Ben Mendelsohn, and he did a great job. I think he had the best performance in the entire movie. I kind of wish that after he would have got his family and got them to safe, you know, he probably would have tried to steal the Tesseract or something like that. Like, ha 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 ha, you know, <laughs> I don't know, some maniacal laughing, but like, you'll never take me alive. I got my family and the Tesseract, mm, you know, but they were just like innocent. Now, I because this is not fair to people that just don't know the comments. I know the scrolls are still evil. OK, mind you, this was in 1995 when this movie was taking place. So, you know, we're going to have 20, 20, 25 plus years in uh, from present day. For, I mean, in present day now, like when Avengers Endgame comes in a, a month and a half and, and further on down the line, because we, we have to have the super scrolls. Um, you know, with, with Marvel and Disney acquiring all the television and film assets of 20th Century Fox, 20th Century Fox, Fox owns this, like this, like we own, like, uh, like, like I own it. Marvel, Disney owns the scrolls, but, uh, 20th Century Fox, 21st Century Fox, they own the super scrolls. 
it's kind of like they have the powers of the Fantastic Four, and they're evil as well. You know, that's why they, there's like a whole secret invasion storyline. So I was a little ticked off at first. Like, wait a minute, the squirrels are not good guys, okay? I mean, they're they're a, a race of people of of thousands, millions, maybe billions, trillions. I don't know. I know their fleet is large as hell. You know what I'm saying? So this is just a subgroup. Over here, I mean, you know, we have seven billion, seven and a half billion people on Earth. Some are good, some are bad. Just because a group of Earthlings go to Mars and, you know, messing with some aliens over here and they're good or bad doesn't mean that they represent all of us. So I kind of had to check myself as far as that's concerned. Now, the thing that I could not absolutely stand and it's old news right now is how Nick Fury lost his eye. That was complete bull crap. Oh, I was so pissed. And I think that's the reason why I did not like the cat so much because it just left a bad taste in my mouth. Like, seriously, I mean, we all seen Captain America Civil War when uh, Captain America came in on Charles Demo. Yeah. Uh, you know, what did he say? Something like, I can't be doing a mission if you have missions uh, going on behind my back or whatever the hell he said. And, you know, Nick Fury was like, last time I touched somebody, I lost an eye. That was a dope ass scene. And that just kind of set the stage like, OK, man. I want to know how Nick Fury lost his eye. It was some badass, you know, battle or betrayal or something like that. And it just really pissed me off. Now, in this movie, Captain Marvel, I would have been perfectly fine to where when the scroll had imitated Phil Coulson uh, when they were trying to chase the train. And he called him like, hey, I'm excuse me, guys. I'm still at the blockbusters. Where is everybody yet? And uh, Nick Fury found out that the person in his passenger seat was... Um, was a squall or whatever so he did what he had to do and turn the car around and the guy he would train the squirrel died and revealed himself and all that stuff so when he was in the uh in the lab holding his eye i would have been perfectly fine with that if, if that's the way that nick fury lost his eye that would have been i mean that would have been not it wouldn't have been as bad as as um you know from the line that he left and uh that he said in captain america winter soldier but it, it's better than this damn cat, you know what I'm saying? And then he did he did trust him too. It would have tied in with the dialogue. He thought that was Coulson. He trusted Coulson or whatever. And you know, he, bam, a train knocked his eye out or whatever. He got a big scratch. But this damn cat is so good. And he scratches his come on, man. Like that was a horrible decision. Kevin Feige, what were you thinking, sir? You know, like, I mean, like, I don't, I just don't understand, man. Did they sneak this scene in at the last minute? I know they didn't do that, but why would you choose that? That was a horrible, horrible decision. And then what makes it even worse is that Nick Fury, you knew the damn cat was dangerous to flirt. And you saw the tentacles coming out and you were scared talking about, I'm picking you up now. You want to play with the cat? Oh, cute little kitty. Ah, it was just goofy. It was dumb. It was random. And I'm pissed off about it, guys. I, I do not like that. That, that was... I think that's one of the worst decisions in all MCU. Well, no, the worst decision was Star Lord in Infinity War when he couldn't control his emotions and 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 messed everything up. But this is second. Gosh darn it! This is second right here. And I was talking about Coulson. I felt that Coulson was a waste of character. I mean, I love Coulson. I was very upset when he died in the first Avengers film, um, and I just felt that they could have used him more. He really didn't have any lines of dialogue, but you know, there was really no sense of personality or charisma to him. I mean, I understand this is a prequel in a sense, but I, I still would have wanted a bit more from Coulson. I also wanted a little bit more from Ronan, the accuser or whatever. I mean, he was just a hologram. I mean, it's just not bad. I just, I, you know, I kind of wish we would have had more. Like, um, I was highly disappointed with Guardians. I mean, I like Guardians of the Galaxy. The first one came out August 2014, but... One of the worst things in that movie to me was Ronan. He was a horrible villain. So when I found that the Lee Pace was coming back to reprise his role as Ronan the Accuser in this film right here, I was like, okay, man, this is dope right here. We're going to be able to see Ronan, you know, in his prime or whatever. We're going to see some badassery and all that good stuff. Not him like, cleanse it. You know, I, I hated that in that movie. But no, we just kind of got a, a hologram uh, Ronan the Accuser. And I'm not, I'm not too thrilled with that. Now, something else that was just kind of dumb and did not make any sense to me was when Nick Fury and Coulson and S.H.I.E.L.D., when they first approached Captain Marvel at the Blockbuster slash Radio Shack in the parking lot, and she was trying to call Jude Law a young Rock's character. The damn scroll is up there minding his own damn business and then shot like, what are you doing? Why would you reveal yourself, bro? Go on about yours and scroll it on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Infiltrate everybody. Do what you got to do. Why would you... 
I don't I don't understand that there, there was a, a a serious plot hole to me. It, it's just like I don't I mean I, I don't I didn't get why he had to do that. You you infiltrated Earth. Nobody knows you're there, but you're just gonna infer you're just gonna excuse me. I'm sorry, guys. Reveal yourself like that. And that 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 uh, that really didn't make sense to me or whatever. Now something that I did like is Talos um, at the morgue or whatever when they was examining the body the dead scroll that we thought was nick colson or whatever he kept his peace you know it was kind of hard for him just to see his boy down there or his girl or whatever and it was kind of funny when they linked uh linked when they looked at the, the cover to see what his biology was down there you know nothing i i, I like that it was funny you know what i'm saying the movie was funny um but when we saw talos right here in this scene or whatever i liked that because he was able to keep his cool and i like how he got up close like i will get my revenge or finish what we started or whatever that was cool i like that that was dope so i appreciate that so annette benning who we thought was the uh uh was the supreme intelligence and i'm kind of glad by the way that we don't we didn't really get to see what their supreme intelligence looks like um Go ahead and just Google it. I'm, I, I didn't put a picture up right now in this video, but go ahead and just Google Supreme Intelligence and click images. You're going to see like a big green bluish head with a bunch of squiggly lines, you know, as hair, like some alien dreadlocks or something that I don't know, need to be redone. That's how the Supreme Intelligence really looks. Um, so that was a nice twist right here. Now, in the comic, Marvel was a big deal. And... Um, well, I don't want to say a big deal because as Annette Benning, this Dr. Wendy Lawson was a mentor for Captain Carol Danvers in the movie Captain Marvel. She was a big mentor in the comics as well, but it was a male. It was a male Cree instead of a female Cree. I don't I don't really care about that. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, so I, I like that reveal right there. Um I I really do. The only thing is Marvell died from a plane. Well, no, she got shot by the Cree thing or whatever. She was hurt by the crash. So I, I'll take that back. But, you know, I did not see that coming. That was cool. Um, also, let's talk about the Tesseract real quick. Uh, yeah, that's on here. Um, yeah, June, June Law, we thought that was going to be um, Marvell, but it wasn't. He was Yon Rocks or whatever. Let's talk about the Tesseract. And now, initially, I was like, wait a minute, what's up with this timeline? But. I thought about it. I've seen the film twice or whatever. Let me talk di sorry, directly to the mic. I've seen the film twice. So, of course, you know, the universe didn't exist. The Infinity Stones were born or created. And then they were floating through space. Um, what is his name? Uh, Odin grabbed hold of it and then was holding it on Asgard. So then he dropped it off in Earth to hide it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody messing with Earth. We cosmic beings over here on Asgard and blah, blah, blah. Earth is a no nobody, a nothing burger. Uh, uh, whatever planet i'll just hide it down there and then the red skull found it in captain america the first avenger or whatever then at the end of that movie he held it and that took him that transported um uh, red skull over to the soul stone that was in vormir and then the uh and then the tesseract you know fell through the ship and crashed landed at the bottom of the ocean you know tony stark's dad found it or whatever when they was looking for captain america so now it is in the government's protection it is in the shield's protection or whatever you know what i'm saying uh not tony stark what what is um it really don't matter but y'all y'all know me um howard stark tony stark's dad iron man's dad you know what i'm saying now it's in the shield's uh, nick fury government protection or whatever so the post credit scene at the end of thor that came out that's when he brought down dr selvig who was being controlled by loki or whatever and that was working on it or whatever but actually before that um i skipped the part before before the post credit scene that's when marvell comes down she's working on trying to make the light space engine and stuff like that now i was kind of thinking how in the world is she able to take the test rack and put it up in her secret base or whatever without nobody knowing about it but she's a cree super genius their technology is like whoa you know what i'm saying so i'm pretty sure she was able to figure something out so all that captain and captain marvel and then the post credit scene for the first Thor movie that's when we see uh, Eric Selvig working on it, and then we see it in the Avengers, and then they take it over to Asgard at the end of that movie. Loki steals it at the end of Thor Ragnarok, and then the next movie, Avengers Infinity War, Thanos gets it, wipes out half of the universe. So everything with the Tesseract makes sense for me. Something that I did not like in the movie was the binary transformation. Now, they had the little pink, the little ring on uh, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel's neck. I didn't know if there was like a universal translator or just a way for them to keep her powers in check or whatever. And I wish they would have just addressed that more. But she just powered up out of nowhere. Just like she just remembered she was a human being. And like, uh, I never give him this. Ah, uh, Super Saiyan. Ah, uh, 
I, I wanted a little bit more from that, uh, but we did not get more. But you know that's okay. I mean, it was it was a cool transformation. It looked nice, and I liked all that. But I'm just like, you know, I, I was waiting for that scene to be just super badass, and it was just okay ass. It wasn't badass. It was just okay ass. And uh, I just wanted a little bit more from that. I was laughing my ass off, of course, with all the '90s nostalgia, uh, blockbuster. Uh, Radio Shack, you know, bring, I mean, Blockbuster, man, I, you know, I, I think there's like one more store in the whole world left or whatever. Um, they should have went digital. I, I, you know, it's too bad for them. Um, but I liked all that. I love the song. Don't go chase. I think that song was in the movie. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but you got to subscribe first. But I liked all that. That was cool. I liked that. The CD-ROM loading was funny as hell. Um, when they were in the house at uh, Monica and uh, Monica Rambo's the daughter. What is the uh, what is the mama's name? Why am I tripping right now? Maria Rambo. You know, when they was at her house, the CD was loading. I, I loved all that. It was funny. She was like, "If you call me young lady one more time, I'll put my foot in your ass." Tell I was Ben. Ben Middleton was like, "What? What? You know?" I, I liked all that. That, that, that was good. I, I liked all that. Um, the laboratory was cool. Um. I'm, like I said, I'm still kind of disappointed that, you know, he just went after his family and didn't care about the uh, the test wreck and all that. And I talked about, guys, how much I love uh, Ma, Ma, Monica Rambo, the little girl. Then that natural hair, she was the cutest thing in, in the film to me. And and when Ma, when Ma, when Maria Rambo and Carol Danvers were going back and forth, catching up and stuff like that, it was a line that uh maria rambo made and i kind of choked up a little bit i was like b you finna cry why your eyes getting water you know what i'm saying you know uh it was just it was just a good scene to me a lot of, i've seen a lot of other people complain about it but it's something that i really like and it stood out to me so you know that's just dope as hell um i also liked at the very beginning of the movie how when carol danvers punched the old lady in the face and everybody was like, oh my god what the hell they was actually trying to help the old lady and, you know, hold Carol Demons down. I like that sense of community and just, you know, hey, um, you know, if if something's bad going on, we can't just stand here and watch and pull out our phones. I like that. You know, they, they could have dropped the ball there. Uh, but I like how they did that. And I really do like the whole sequence with the scroll memory, uh, you know, thing that they had. Um, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, at the very beginning, they had her legs up and they were trying to jot her memory to focus on all that. I liked all that. That was cool. Uh, nice sense of technology. I liked everything in that scene and I liked the fighting as well. Uh, that's something I'm be looking forward to on Blu-ray 4K when it comes out in a number of months. And the guys, the last thing that I want to talk about is um, like I like how you know you know the exposition that they gave when they were pulling up to the base. Like, no, my name is Fury. It's not Nicholas. It's not this. If I had kids, they would call me Fury too. They were just planning the scene to where when Talos the Scroll came through and was like, uh, hey, Nicholas, great job. And Nicholas was like, what the hell? I like that. That that was cool. Uh, but guys, you know, that's everything that I really wanted to talk about in the spoilers review. I, I really don't want this to be that long, but I really did enjoy the movie. It, it is split down the middle, and I'm just kind of surprised by that. But, you know, everybody is entitled to their opinion, um, as I am mine. But like I just said, guys, that is just my opinion. What did you think about Captain Marvel? How many times did you see the film? Do you want to see it anymore? Do you never want to see it again? I heard somebody say that. Um, that was like, the only way I watch this again is if I'm hanging out with a chick that's bad, like Instagram bad, you know what I'm saying? Not even my girlfriend. I was like, okay, hey, that's what's up. But guys, uh, thank you so much, uh, for tuning in for my spoiler review for Captain Marvel. I really do appreciate it. Did you like the movie? Did you hate it? Did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. Um, you can also look me up on social media. Go ahead and do that, man. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff there in the description box below. But guys, again, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review, my reaction, my spoiler review of Captain Marvel. And before you go, don't forget that in uh, Avengers Infinity War, no, Avengers Endgame is right around the corner. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.